Every Friday on Oz, it's Celebrity Superfan Takeover. This week, spend Valentine's Day with Morris Chestnut. He's the most gorgeous thing on the planet right now. <laughs> Together, we solve some food fight feuds, driving couples crazy. Oh, no, no, you have to fold it. No. You have to fold it. Plus, we go undercover. Yeah, Porky Pig, let's go. In our hidden camera, help stings. Mental abuse is not helping. Coming up next. It's Celebrity Takeover Friday. It's also Valentine's Day. And my present to all of you is not this chocolate. It's my co-host, your favorite actor, Morris Chestnut. Hey. What, 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 why are you wearing the scrubs? I scrubbed up. I'm, I'm going to be in the Dr. Oz show, so I want to be in scrubs. I'm going to do some doctor stuff. Listen, just because you're a star playing a doctor on TV doesn't mean you can, you can steal the look. Look, I got the look. I'm ready to go. I got all the terms down. I'm like a wizard. I want to be the, the wizard of Dr. Oz. That's what I want to well, do. Well, let's move on. Are, are you going to bring the romance to the audience today? I'll bring the romance to the audience, but I just want to be the... I want to do the doctor stuff. Can we? Can I diagnose some people? Can I you know, talk to them about the problem, get them healthy, and just, you know, can I do some stuff like that? Will you promise to change? Just change for me. All right. Okay. All right. Season 11. Yeah! There he is! Well, I felt like Love I was security that. protecting you coming oh, down those steps. No, I, mean, I, I know you paid these people a lot of money to, to scream and yell, no, no. so thank you for that. Are you at the, I appreciate that. We actually had to block the doors, the word tickets. <laughs> oh, no. I thank you all for coming. Like, Award-winning actor known for his roles in films like Boys in the Hood, Best Man Holiday, <laughs> and tons of other good things. But now he plays a doctor in Fox's new hit show, The Resident, which is absolutely fantastic. Moore has been well-known for stealing the hearts of fans for over 20 years. I got to say, yeah. this romantic comedy, yeah. role that you've been able to capture is fantastic, but that's not what you're doing now with The Resident. I'm not doing that now in The Resident, and it's funny because I've, I've played the good guy on my whole career, and now I'm playing a bad guy on The Resident. Yeah. And, see? See, people want to kill me. I got to watch my back. <laughs> I do. I need 24-hour I need security now because the doctor, my, the doctor that I play on, on The Resident does so many bad things, but it's fun. It's, it's, uh, it's a different character for me, and I'm really excited about it. Take a quick look at this. This is actually not far from what really happens sometimes. Last week, I was operating on a young father whose seizures were so devastating, he couldn't hold his child. So Dr. Kane, do you have a second? That's one of our nurses who I will be with shortly. It's about a patient. Excuse me. I think we need to push the surgeries today, maybe two. And why would I do that? Because this place isn't ready. We're missing medicine. I mean, the staff doesn't know how to work the software. We can't even get the thermostat to work. Growing pains are part of the process. This is different. Someone could die. Everything seems to be running smoothly to me. That's because you're distracted. You're more focused on the donors than you are on your patients, like Lucy. I want them to both, and I will see you in the OR. It's some serious uh, stuff. I, I, serious I, stuff. I love that you're stretching. I'm going to stretch you today. OK, cool. Let's I guess, do it. I got some hot topics, but they're sort of serious ones. Then we'll lighten it up. Let's talk about it. Let's do it. Jesse Smollett, who's been on the show, whose family I know, uh, ju just got indicted by a special prosecutor in Chicago. Uh, he's uh, claiming that they're claiming that he falsely uh, was m made up a story that he was racially uh, profiled and attacked. Uh -huh. Thoughts on this? So, well, I, you know, I wasn't, I'm not really sure of the exact information on this case. I thought it was dropped. Was it, were the charges dropped at one point and they, they came back? Yeah, they, they all went away last March. And then... I think for a bunch of different reasons, okay. it's back. And now folks are saying, wait a minute, you wasted a lot of our resources. You cried wolf. There's got to be a price to pay for that. They didn't know the prosecutor dropped it at the time. Everyone's gotten involved. It gets politicized, of course. But the, the, the deeper question is, sh should there be a, a penalty incurred when you do that? And if so, what kind of penalty? 
Well, it depends on, on what exactly he did. I mean, if they drop the charges, I would be curious to see why did they drop the charges in the first place. Mm -hmm. And then what happens, why did they bring the charges back? That's what I would want to know. I, want to, I need all the information. Yeah. If I had all the information, I could make a decision, <laughs> but I don't have all the information right the now. The doctor. You, see, you sound like a doctor now. Yeah, I need all the information. I need, we need to all know it all. All right, another topic. This one you might know about. Sure. Rock's daughter, Simone. You may yes. not know this, right? But she's training for the WWE. She just signed a contract with them, and mm -hmm. he's encouraging this even though she's only 18. Now, there's a reason, because he sort of got his big break that way, too. Right, right. What are your thoughts on this? You got two kids in college. I do. I got my big break when I was in college, and I think whenever your, your children, when they want to do something, you want to support them in anything they do. If my kids, whatever they want to do, whether it's playing marbles or, you know, rock climbing, as long as it's legal, I'm, for, I'm all for it. I support them. As long as it's legal. As long as it's legal. But you got, legal. you got your big break in college. I did. I got my big break in college, and, you know, she's, she's a great age, and all she has to do is say, hey, if someone tries to grab her, say, I'm going to tell my dad, and they're going like that. That's right. <laughs> they'll, they'll, they'll go. No, my Mr. Nice Guy. No, dad. yeah, yeah. This. Let, uh, let me transition to this college scandal, the yes. admission scandal, which I, a lot of people have been affected by. You're in Hollywood. Mm-hmm. You got kids in college. You probably worked your tail off with them to get them to the right place where they could get into college. Yeah. How does it affect you when you see folks cheating on this? You know what's in interesting is I didn't know that they went through the depths, to the depths of that with the resumes and everything. Um, it's, it's another situation where, listen, I'll be honest, when I first started acting, um, I may have fibbed on my resume. <laughs> I mean, just a little bit. But that's to get an acting job. What's that? That's to get an acting job. To get an acting job. job, yeah. So I filmed on my resume a little bit and hope you guys don't go back and check now. <laughs> oh, they gotta tell us now. Yeah, what, yeah, yeah. what did you film about? You know, this was a true story, true story. So what would happen was so it was it's a catch twenty two in Hollywood. You can't get your SAG card unless you have a job. Yeah. And you can't get a job unless you have your SAG card. So what I would do in don't try this at home. Um, <laughs> if I went on, if I did a, a, a scene for a play in my acting class, mm -hmm. I did that play somewhere. Oh. If I went on an audition that was on a low-budget movie, because back in the day, they didn't have IMDb. They just had, you know, you just put your resume out there. You can go on. See, technology has hurt a lot of actors' opportunities out there. <laughs> <laughs> and it wouldn't hurt my... And so, yeah, so you couldn't check back in the day. But, yeah, so that's what I used to do. If I did a scene in an acting class, I would put that and say I did it as a play. And, you know, it's just to get in there. You still have to go in there and earn it, you know. I still had to go in there. And, and compete and earn a job. Well, this is different, obviously, because a lot of times it wasn't even the kids treating it was their parents. So Full House's Lori Loughlin's daughter's resume just came out, just released, mm -hmm. and the doctorate accomplishments making her look like she was a decorated athlete. Parents, by the way, have denied that they forged the athletic resume, but there were things like gold and silver medals and crew, and the parents mm -hmm. are accused of paying half a million dollars for getting her kid, their kids admit, <laughs> admitted to USC. Wow, a half a million plus the tuition of USC. Does it, does it make you mad that that could have been happened? That someone could buy their way ahead of your child or someone else's child? It, you know, it is a challenging thing so, where someone is getting an opportunity because they're paying money over someone who actually earned it. Yeah, that's, that's the, definitely a challenge. That, that, that's where it breaks down for me. It's so competitive, and it's a, it's a golden ticket if you get into college. Oh, most yeah. definitely, most definitely. But did, did everyone who did that, did they get in? I have no idea. Again, for me, we are talking about this on the, on the show a lot, there's a lot of bad stuff that happens that no one ever finds out. 100%. We think they do, right. but the job of the show and anybody in the audience is shine a light. You know, find where the darkness is, shine a light, let's just make sure honest things are happening. 100%. When good people uh, are doing the right thing, they'll enforce the rules. We don't need law enforcement. We'll do it ourselves sometimes. 100%. All right, next hot topic is perfect for foodies like you. Yes. I watched him backstage, big time foodie. The biggest yeah. Valentine's Day gift trend is food bouquets, and we're talking about bacon roses or bacon roses. chicken nuggets. Yeah. There's yeah, even yeah. pickled bouquets. You know, and you know, and look, and that stuff sounds good. Maybe I would have a protein rose, but oh, I, oh <laughs> a protein bouquet. No, but you know, I'm a, I have a huge sweet tooth. I love sweets. I, mean, I eat sweets every day, probably too much. And um, so, yeah, I, I would love to have a bouquet of something sweet. Something sweet, a something bouquet. Something sweet. Can we arrange oh. something for Morris Chestnut? This. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Oh. Wow, wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. That's... Let me, I'm going to show you. This, Look is, at this is a bouquet. Ah. This is a bouquet of something sweet. Oh, look oh, at that. Nice look at that. Oh, look at nice that. And done. You see how that is? You see that? Did the camera get a shot there? <laughs> you mind if I give this? Oh, my. Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> Happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> oh, my. Well, up next, hidden camera house things will make your mouth drop. What would you do if you're at the gym and you heard a trainer say this to his client? 10 pounds. Okay. Yeah, grocery bags. I bet you if it was a grocery <laughs> bag. I bet you if it was a grocery bag full of donuts, right, you'd be okay. Ooh. 
Would you have the courage to step in and speak up? Think about it. Would you do it? Find out what happens when we come back. Want to get the most out of your microwave? We're answering your burning questions. How many minutes? Can I make spaghetti? Is this plastic safe? How do I defrost? Fish in the microwave? We have some major microwave matters. We need to get to the bottom of it. Plus, my personal journey with my mom and Alzheimer's. And the latest medical breakthrough that could be a game changer. This Alzheimer's vaccine seemed almost too good to be true. All new Oz. That's coming up on Monday. Today, my co-host Morris shows up. The audience loves you, but you're practicing. <laughs> I pay him a lot of money to do that for me. <laughs> but you're practicing your cringe face. Yeah, yeah, it. I'm sorry. Ooh. Ooh. Why? Funny, now, yeah. Here's why he's doing it. Because we're bringing you hidden camera stings that are cringe-worthy. All about health issues. That's right. We had our undercover cameras rolling to see how people would respond to some pretty outrageous situations. For example, what would you do? If you're at the gym, right, minding your own business, and someone was being fat shamed right in front of you, mm. would you intervene? Yeah. We're at RX30, one of Manhattan's hidden gym gems. Comedian Chuck Nice is playing the role of a gym trainer. His client, Janine, is an actor. We asked Chuck to fat shame Janine. Come on, this is heavy. 10 pounds. Okay. So I bet you if it was a grocery bag, I bet you if it was a grocery bag <laughs> full of donuts, right, you'd be okay. I do not buy grocery bags full of donuts. <laughs> well, then let's, let's not look like we do. Our cameras were rolling the entire time to see how people would react. Don't, don't embarrass your whole gender by letting a guy jump rope better than you. Come on, what? let's go. <laughs> Some people seemed disturbed, but didn't say anything. Then Donna and Lisa arrived. When did you develop arthritis? Why are you slowing down? Come on, Janine. I'm not abusing you, okay? This is called reality, all okay, right? Can we just you know what else is reality? This right here, all right? All right? Now you're gonna insult me. Don and Lisa are clearly uncomfortable, but don't say anything. Then, Janine decides to grab a snack. Are you insane? Wait, no, I'm just gonna get What are you doing? Wait, this. A muffin? I'm just gonna You already got a muffin top. You don't need this. Finally, Donna and Lisa react big. I can feel the pain because you know what? All my life I've been in this fat body and it sucks, okay? And I'm just listening to what she goes to. She wants it. She wants it bad. And I'll put down? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Kimberly came next and Chuck was still at it. Ugh. All right, Warner Brothers. Warner Brothers? Yeah, Porky Pig, let's go. <laughs> Finally, Kimberly had had enough. Is this a difference working out with you embarrassing her in front of everybody? How am I embarrassing her when I'm trying to help her? Mental abuse is not healthy. And then this happened. This is called a burpee. I'm sure you're familiar with gas. As so much as you eat, you got belly issues, you end up with some gas. So. You need something else. All right, it's a burpee. Okay. All right, <clears throat> right here we go. <clears throat> uh. That was it. Amanda couldn't hold back. Okay, George. so I teach kindergarten, right? Okay. We learn to read each other's faces. Look at her face right now. Does she look happy? Happy face or sad face? She's upset. What would you suggest? I would suggest you being empowering her and making her feel better, and that will get her stronger. I'm not a trainer. I'm actually a stand-up comedian. <laughs> My name is Chuck Nice. <laughs> You're not nice. And, and I'm not nice. <laughs> Priceless. Amanda is actually here. You're my hero. We're going to talk to you in a second. <laughs> Along with actor and comedian Chuck Nice. I emphasize actor and actor. comedian. Actor. I, 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 I haven't known you for a long time. Long you are time. the nicest guy. The, the name is appropriately picked. Yes. H how did it make you feel to be such a jerk? Let me just say this uh, to anybody watching right now. Whatever you have to do in life to be nice, to make you feel good about yourself, please go ahead and do it. I don't care. Buy a puppy, hug somebody, smoke weed. I don't care. <laughs> Because after that was over, first of all, I was exhausted. Being mean is really hard work. Yeah. <laughs> hard work. Yeah. Of course, you're a gym guy, you're working on it. If you saw that happening, what would you do? You know, it's, it's tough because sometimes you don't know if people hire tough trainers because they can't motivate themselves. But what I want to say is high five to you for yeah. having the courage yeah. to step yeah. up. Yeah. Yes. I really appreciate it. That's great, that's great. Well, why did you step up? Why, you could have just sat there, gone into the other room, get the, something to drink, left, but you 
put your hand up and said, I'm the one. I'm making a difference. Yeah, because not only was he, I mean, he burped in her face. Mm -hmm. He insulted her stomach. And that kind of treatment isn't helpful. And I thought, I'm going to stand up for her. I'm not going to put up with this. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Let me tell you. Not only, not only am I proud, I'm scared of you because <laughs> anytime a little white woman is uh, uh, able to go up against an intimidating black man, <laughs> I'm just saying. Uh, and she didn't care. Yeah, actually, you know, all the women were great. But, actually, what, what, it, there was two things. There was obviously the emotional hang up and you dealt with that nicely, but it doesn't work either. Yeah. Take the easy it's path, be nice. The easy path. All right, coming yeah, up, coming up. If you've ever wondered about dirty, untrustworthy restaurants and snack shops, <laughs> Stick around for the next Health Sting. This is your best look. We are back with more hidden camera health things you need to see to believe. So we had hidden cameras rolling to see who had the courage to speak up and who would stay silent. Let's see what happens with this next hidden health sting. We're back at RX30, this time at their beautiful juice bar. We rigged it with hidden cameras and then proceeded to turn it into a disgusting snack counter. Comedian Chuck Nice is playing the role of juice bar manager. We offered a few people the opportunity to job train under Chuck. Mari was our first trainer. Poor Mari. She has no idea that Chuck is a hot, unsanitary mess. I don't worry about washing hands. I don't, I don't even care about that kind of stuff, so. Our first customer arrives. Can I get a regular green fit? Green fit? Sure thing, man. You have a seat, sir, and I'll bring it right over to you. Grab some um, kale out of there. But there's a problem. Chuck has run out of a key ingredient, fresh mint. So what I do is a couple Altoids in there. Curiously strong. Oh, that's great. That's all we need. So, you wanna take the seeds out? Nah, nah, we don't need that. That goes in there too. It's supposed to be almond milk, but I only have regular milk. Can you hand me the regular milk, please? What if he's allergic to milk? Shouldn't you ask him? I mean, how many people are really allergic to milk? Not many. A lot of people. Really? Yeah, I'm lactose intolerant. I don't But that's not an allergy. Sure it is. No, it just makes you fart. So, no, look, here's what I do Chuck's secret ingredient is sugar. Lots of it. No, no, no. Look, I'm you serious. I, look, what people care about is the fact that it's green. I'm telling you right now. Watch this. <gasps> you can't. Oh my God, that is delicious. Oh, I can't sit here and mix up with you if you're not going to follow the rules. You can still make that taste good without making it seem like that. Have you ever had kale? It's disgusting. I love kale. Hey. I'm sorry. Can you make a new one or? Just wait a minute, man. That is delicious. Oh my God, you can't handle that. I, 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 I want a new one now. Yeah, I will. I'll make your brand yeah. new one. Oh, wow, that Actor. was funny. That was hilarious. <laughs> Actor and comedian Chuck Nice is here with Marty, who you just saw exasperated by those working conditions. First of all, you're the meanest, grossest boss. Did it come easy to you? All I can say is this show is going to be great for my image. <laughs> 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 I'm resuscitating you. All right. So you, your lactose intolerance, it turned out. So do you worry about that at all when you're watching your mean, cruel, gross boss do that Absolutely. stuff? Absolutely. Especially when he was, like, making light of it and saying, oh, it only, you know, causes flatulence. Well, it doesn't. For some people, it could be deadly. Yeah. I mean, it well, is, uh, yeah. you know. And sometimes flatulence can be deadly. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever worry that it would happen to you that someone would flip the milk in place of whatever else you ordered? You know what? I wasn't so conscious of it, but now I am. And I, I'm, I'm curious because sometimes you go to these, you know, smoothie shops and you go, oh, that tastes really good, but I told them not to put any sugar in it. And now I'm wondering. Yeah. <laughs> maybe they are putting sugar in it. So I'm going to be more aware of watching them when they're fixing it and doing it for well, me because, you know, it's important. Hopefully you won't have a lot of bosses like this, but it got <laughs> worse, Marty, from you. Let's go back to that juice bar snack counter because you're not going to believe what happened next. One more for a okay. carrot ginger. Right off the bat, an order comes in for a carrot ginger juice. The carrots, though, are super dirty. Just rinse them, but don't clean them because the this is actual. You smell that? That's the earthiness. I want that in the drink. You want the dirt in the drink? Yes, absolutely. A pinch of cayenne? I'm out of cayenne, unfortunately. OK. I don't have coconut milk. I have regular milk. Oh. This is, this is breast milk. That's breast milk. That's the owner. What? That's the owner. The owner has a baby. Tough beef, no. <laughs> That's where I have to say no. no what do you no. mean? This, this is perfectly natural. Mm -hmm. 
This the most natural, healthy thing in the world is breast milk. Imagine you going somewhere and ordering something and they substitute something else that... If it was breast milk, I would think it was kind of sexy, but... <laughs> well, I'm glad, I'm glad that you feel that way because I'm not a juice bar manager. Oh <laughs> <laughs> I'm here horrified, like, what is going on? <laughs> So, we're still this show. Wow. What are you thinking watching that? Well, from now on, when I go to Starbucks, I'm going to be watching them like a yes. hawk every time they make a <laughs> hawk. I am not taking my eyes off of me. I'm watching them. <laughs> what gave you the courage to speak up when he said that about the breast milk? Because I was mortified. I couldn't imagine being somewhere being served breast milk. I mean... <laughs> and she not only spoke up. I was... Yeah. When it was over, I said to her, I was like, you clearly have children. Yeah. And I said, because you were just like, no. Yeah. No. No. <laughs> no. No, you put it down. No. And I was like, wow. Yeah. Like, and I'm supposed to be the boss. Yeah. Uh -huh. And she was basically like, no, 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 no. no. Moms uh, have that role. I am yes. so proud of you. Thank you. You know, this is the whole year, this season is about power one. Mm -hmm. If you just stick up and do the right thing, Absolutely. you did the right thing. Everyone thank did you. today. Yes. Except you, Chuck Nice. Yes. Who wasn't nice? Although you actually are very nice. Yes. All right, we're yes. going to be back with the biggest couples food fights ever. Stick around. Oh, awesome. Thank you, Dr. Oz. Very nice to meet you. Monday in February on Oz. The cameras are everywhere, and we're bringing you shocking video. The good, the bad, and the outrageous. Every Monday in February on Oz. We're back with Morris Chestnut, my co-host for today's Celebrity Superfan Takeover. That's me. Today we are celebrating Valentine's Day, helping couples resolve some of the biggest food fights of all time. Take a look. Are you kidding me, right? Are you kidding me? What, what's your problem now? You, you're eating with the fork in the mouth. Just eat it with the bread. What do you care how I eat the pizza? Because it's annoying. Watch, do it again. It doesn't taste the same. It's even better the second time. Who doesn't love this creamy flavor no. first? You're not supposed to peel it open. Mm-mm. It's the best part. No, you have to eat it in one bite, all natural. Mm, hold on. Mm, no, cream first. Right, I'll give yours a shot, too. No, one bite. No. I told you the last time when we came in here that the ketchup needs to be inside the cabinet. Did you read the back? When it says after use, put it in the refrigerator? It doesn't, no. It says refrigerate mm -mm, no, after no, 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 no. When we go to the restaurant, where's the ketchup? It's out in the jars, right? Uh, yeah. But where did they get it from? Just because it says refrigerate, how many times have So did you follow instructions? No. Exactly. See, that's the problem. No, I don't follow instructions. That's why we're married. Oh. But I love you. Mm. I love them. I really do. I don't know. Yeah. What do you think about this ketchup fridge food fight? In or out? So the ketchup has to stay in the fridge. Yeah. When is it? Stay in the fridge, right? Yeah. yeah, stay in the fridge. Ketchup in the fridge. Who thinks it doesn't have to stay in the fridge? Yeah. Fridge? Yeah. There it is. The fridge has it. It's not mob rule. I actually looked into this. Believe it or not, it's not milk. It's not yogurt. And the ketchup, because it's got little acidic elements to it, uh -huh. you can actually leave it outside the fridge, and it works just fine. Wow, wow. I can't say this, though. I can't say this. I, I, honestly, I can't really tell you because my daughter eats it so fast. <laughs> she pours it all on the french fries and I don't ever get... It's been a better it. reason to leave it out. Yeah, now, yeah. If you're going to eat a little itty bit every week, then it's going to last for months. Put it in the fridge, it lasts longer. There you go. Last right. longer, fridge. Last longer. All right, now, the next food fight involves something everybody adores, ice cream. Choose your microwave, your carton of ice cream, to speed uh. up the soft, because you take it out of the fridge, you want to eat it, and it's too hard. So, you leave it on the counter, or do you microwave it? A couple of Tisha and Ryan joined us now because they can't agree on this either. <laughs> Plead your case. You have to microwave your ice cream. That's literally why the microwave was invented. I mean, okay, you don't want to have your ice cream super hard. You have to put it in the microwave, let it sit, 33 seconds. That's literally... 33 seconds oh, in the microwave? 33 <laughs> seconds wow. to the tea. There's math to this. You wow. cannot do 32, not 34, 33 seconds. 33 Period. seconds. Yes, and it's perfect. Melts in your mouth. It's amazing. Right. Am I right? Okay. I don't know. He did, you're you're on the degree. <laughs> it's ridiculous. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Just leave it out. Just eat it how it is, right out the car, and just no. eat it. You can let it melt a little bit. 
But put the spoon in there, it's all you need. I like Rocky Road, so if I put Rocky Road in there, how would my marshmallows and my Wait. almonds taste? Oh my gosh, the marshmallows and almonds, it literally melts right in there. It seems like perfect. it would just be yeah, a, you, a shake yeah, after, uh, after, after, after. You can't <laughs> influence can the judge. Oh, here we go. Let me give it a Taste it, each one. So one of these is microwave and one of these is... Was left out for 10 minutes. You taste While you're talking about this, we're going to settle the food fight with this test, but one of these microcartons is going to turn you on and one's going to really just be unhappy for you because it's been sitting out... But not in the microwave. Which one? Red or blue? Which one is what? Which one is better? Which one do you like more? I like the blue better. Good consistency. It's ice cream. Mm -hmm. This is almost like a malt. All right, so the red was microwaved. That was yours. Morris goes for the leaving out. <laughs> well, just go buy the, go buy the shake. <laughs> you like that. There you go. <laughs> but you know, the, the science on this is pretty clear. The consistency stays better if you just take it out, let it sit for a few seconds. Don't be so impatient. All right. <laughs> Instead of throwing the microwave for 33 seconds. But I'm, Morris, come back here. We're going to teach you a little bit right, here. Sure. We made this little animation. Only on Dr. Osh you get animations like this. Who else makes an animation of ice cream? OK, so <laughs> let's get into the actual uh, reality of what happens to your microwave ice cream. Remember, it's all about chemistry. 50% mm. of the ice cream is air. Air. These little air bubbles are hiding in there. They got churned up and made it creamy, right? So when it begins to melt in the microwave, that air, well, it gets lost. It starts to go up to the top. This whole thing sort of becomes a puddle of soup, or at least softer. And when you stick it back in the fridge, you don't have the air anymore. So you refreeze a basically a dense block of cream. So the consistency is not creamy. Doesn't have the smoothness that you like when That's you just taste it. That's what I'm saying. It's not ice cream. It's a shake. It's a malt. You want a Morse chestnut smoothness. There it is, yeah. smoothness. There it is. <laughs> so the debate is settled. There it is. Soften it on the counter. I hope you stop fighting. Yeah, you happy? Yes. No. <laughs> Thank you. All right, we'll there's one more food right. fight. Yeah. This is an issue about how to eat a burger the correct way. A couple, Doug and Lauren, are battling oh. it. They got a beef. A beef about the burger. Right. Doug swears you got to eat the burger upside down, right? Upside down, upside down, you disagree. So first, describe a technique to us. So what do you do is, normally the burger comes the other way, right? So what you do is you're going to flip it upside down, right? You're going to grab it, and the hopefully the tomato doesn't fall out, <laughs> right. right? And you're just going to bite into it just like that, right? As simple as that. Just like that, right? So my wife over here, she looks at me like I'm crazy. Well, Lauren, is Meanwhile, he crazy? Yeah. Yeah, he's crazy. It's weird. My my three and my six year old eat like this. <laughs> I don't think it's and the way that the burger the bun is made, like I feel like it's like padded for your fingers. Mm. And this is how normal. See, th that's where she's eat. wrong. That's where she's wrong. But what's the philosophy? Why do you turn it upside Why? down? Why? Because when you turn it upside down, right? I'm gonna try it again. All the juices go to the bottom. Oh, oh right. the bottom's bigger. So now she's over here using napkins upon napkin, and I'm over one napkin. And I'm good to go. No stains on the shirt. No stains, nothing. Wow. Let's settle this once and for all. Morris, take it away. I'm, I'm going I'm to try it because I felt I feel like the, the, the bottom bun is a little bit more dense than the, than the top bun. Mm -hmm. So it absorbs the juices. But I'll try it your way this try time. Try it my way. He's flipped it over. I need some music here. <laughs> Tasting music. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't think it worked. Oh. Well, you're using a napkin. Yeah, yeah, I, don't, yeah I, mean, I don't think it worked. It didn't absorb anything. I think, um, <laughs> for me, I have to go with the traditional way. Eat it right, right side up. That's what I'm saying. I mean, we had the tasty music. It was sexy. There was stuff dripping down, but that wasn't the point today. Right. It was the opposite. All right, well, it's always good to lose to your wife. She's going to win anyway, no matter what. Yeah, there you go. All right, the battle's settled. <laughs> Eat it right side up. I don't think it makes much difference either. In fact, they're good both ways. Up next, my own wife, Lisa, she turned on me. On Valentine's Day of all days, find out the food fight that divides the Oz household when we come back. Oh, boy. He's having more. We'll be right back. Uh, going the right we'll way. Back. We are back with the wonderful Morris Chestnut, and we are celebrating Valentine's Day with a couple's food fight. So take that, Hallmark. We're coming after you. My wife, Lisa, and I have food fights all the time. This is an important one. We are debating about something that we just cannot get straight. Morris, you have the unfortunate position, the predicament of having to arbitrate this. Okay. Lisa, describe the issue here until... Un, well, if you don't explain it right, I'll redo it. Go ahead. <laughs> The issue is eggs. Now, I don't usually like what he likes anyway, mm -hmm. but we both like eggs. And I like them cooked, you know? Cooked. So, like, not raw, like not stolen from the chicken. Yes. He, <laughs> he literally, if it's not, he it won't even, doesn't he, Rocky style. 
That's wow. his favorite. Just oh, like really? just, oh, raw. Really? Yeah. Just, just oh, yeah. Raw eggs. Sushi eggs, basically. Sushi eggs. Yeah. That's what it is. So, so why do you? So why do you have a problem with him not liking it? Well, look. I mean, again, as I said, I don't normally agree with all the stuff that he likes to eat. Uh -huh. It does not doesn't have such a great look taste. That. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. But, but that's not healthy. <sighs> You know, and then cut yours, so cut yours mine, so can no, see what mine yours has like. to be cooked properly. Well, cooked properly. Just a little so that's even a little soft for me. I like it to be able to spread on the bread, yes. but not no, be too like runny the, because the life's been sucked out of If this. a bacteria can grow in there, I don't really want to be eating right. it. Have okay. you heard of salmonella? Yes. Come back here. Yes, right? yes. Yeah. And that's a very, that's a very good point. Very good point. Oh, it's overrated. All right, here it is. <laughs> so listen, let's break it down. Look at the different stages of eggs. All right. So this is the way eggs originally were made. Right. There's the egg. It's broken, and all kinds of just liquid gold comes out of it. The sun is shining inside of you when you eat this egg. Then you have this, which is acceptable. Right. The super runny's over here. It's a little bit uh, more uh, firmer, we'll say. Firm. We firm. like. We like. Okay. That. You firm like firm is good. Is firm is All right. good. So this is getting too dry for me. I don't know what to do with this. And this, when I see these things, I start gagging. It's like the Sahara Desert in there. <laughs> Nothing can live in this terrain. All right. So not salmonella either, by the way. Uh, it'll kill everything. Anything it touches it. All right. So it really bothers you that he likes the runny eggs. You know, he, if he likes it, he can eat it. I just don't want him to get sick. I don't want to be the one in charge of getting him sick because I, I cook for him. And if I serve him something, and gets him sick. I'm not too happy with that. And uh, yeah, good point. She's looking out for your health. But what we did was we, I contacted the CDC. You to, did? Uh, yes, I want to get oh, an my. explanation about this oh. issue. <laughs> right? Can I have the envelope? He'll be here all week, by the way, trying to corn beef. <laughs> <laughs> and it turns out that the best way to cook your eggs is firm. Of course it fully is. Fully cooked. Thank firm you very and fully much. cooked. And they do say, though, well, <laughs> <laughs> no, oh, no. I'm so mad. Like, yeah. this, what I do is I break this baby here, uh -oh. like that, and by the time you finish your explanation, that should be edible. That's what I think. That should be edible. Right. Oh, that was but pretty good. Firm, firm is just, uh, come on firm now, help me out a bit. That's okay. You know what? He's on Team Lisa. I'm, I'm on Team Lisa. I'm on I, Team Lisa. I knew this was going to happen. <laughs> whenever, whenever, whenever it comes to women, they, they like it firm. <laughs> <laughs> so, <God>. so, <laughs> yes, we do. No, but so I'm going to help you out a little bit. Thank you. I am going to help you out a little bit. There's, um, have a little something um, from the heart. This is from the heart. A peace offering. A peace offering from the heart. Honey, I <gasps> thought of this myself with Aww. Morris's help. He said, if I bought these, Thank you'd forgive you. me. Happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> More... <laughs> this is true. Mary Lisa. Uh -huh. Mary Lisa was the best thing I ever did. Oh, and it's 35 years this year. Wow, congratulations. And 35 roses. All right, we'll be right back. Want to get the most out of your microwave? How many minutes? Can I make spaghetti? Is this plastic safe? How do I defrost? Fish in the microwave? We have some major microwave matters. We need to get to the bottom of it. All new Oz. That's coming up on Monday. <laughs> Over six million people in the U.S. have heart failure. In fact, about one out of every five people over age 40 may develop heart failure in their lifetime. And it accounts for roughly 900,000 hospitalizations annually at a rate of nearly two every minute. So heart failure means the heart is unable to pump enough blood to meet the body's needs for blood and oxygen. And not every kind of heart failure is the same. Today, we're showing you how to recognize the types of heart failure as the condition can worsen over time if left untreated and what you need to know to keep your heart pumping. But first, I want you to meet a friend of mine, Eddie, who's been living with heart failure for more than two years. He's here on behalf of my trusted sponsorship partner, Novartis. Welcome, Eddie. Hey, how are you? Uh, that's it. There are two major kinds of heart failure. There's heart failure with a reduced ejection fraction or squeeze of the heart, and there's heart fa failure with preserved ejection fraction. So I'm going to explain what these are in a second, Eddie, but what kind do you have? So I have heart failure with reduced ejection fraction. Right. And the experience that you've had, the symptoms, what's it been like having it? So I first noticed shortness of breath, just, you know, doing everyday activities like carrying my groceries. And I tended to ignore these symptoms until one day I was walking on the treadmill at a pretty slow pace and I felt like I just could not breathe. I knew at that time I needed to see my doctor since this is something I could normally do without any trouble. 
So how did they diagnose that you had heart failure? <clears throat> what was it like he hearing that? Well, it was, it was difficult finding the right diagnosis. Um, one night I decided to go to the ER because I noticed my body had just become so swollen. Yeah. Um, when I went to the ER, uh, they told me that I'd put on over 30 pounds of fluid and oh I was admitted goodness. to the hospital. <laughs> yeah. Um, I was completely shocked when they diagnosed me with heart failure. I mean, I was only 44 years old mm -hmm. and I have no family history of heart failure. Well, it can be very unpredictable, but if you can get it in time, it makes a huge difference. But I want everyone to understand what kind of heart failure we're talking about here. And so we're going to explain both kinds. So my friend had reduced ejection fraction of heart failure, but I want to walk you back to the heart in general. So let's go inside of you. This is what a healthy heart looks like, right? The blood is pumping normally through all the chambers, right? The blue on one side, the red on the other side, like it's supposed to. Now, once the blood gets to this last chamber here, the heart pumps out more than half of what's in there. To, to your body, right? But with this kind of heart failure, where the heart begins to dilate, the main chamber of the heart here is stretched, it's weakened. The blood fills the chamber, but the heart can't contract properly to pump enough of that blood to the body. Then there's another type of heart failure, right? This is a heart failure with preserved ejection fraction. And with this kind of heart failure, the chamber gets really thick, like you can see here. See how thick that is? Right? And the heart's contracting, it's pumping out the same percentage of blood that's coming in as in a healthy heart but because the heart can't relax, it can't expand to fill with as much blood as before. You all clear on the difference, right? Two different sides. So here to tell us more about the two types of heart failure is nurse practitioner Beth Davison, who's here on behalf of my trusted sponsorship partner, Novartis. How do you diagnose heart failure and what are the symptoms to look for in addition to being swollen, 30 pounds of extra water weight being an example? Well, heart failure with reduced ejection fraction and heart failure with preserved ejection fraction can share symptoms. And like Eddie mentioned, they can be sort of nonspecific and make diagnosis delayed. Some of the common symptoms are the shortness of breath and the swelling due to extra fluid, like Eddie mentioned. But patients also get weak and fatigue, and sometimes they'll have a persistent dry cough. And like you mentioned, heart failure with preserved ejection fraction can be a little more challenging to diagnose because when the heart beats, you know, the amount of blood leaving the chamber appears to be normal. But it's not, it's tricky, so we have to look for it. Which is more common, the heart failure with preserved ejection fraction or with reduced ejection fraction? Believe it or not, it's very equal. About half the patients who have heart failure have re reduced ejection fraction. Half the patients who have heart failure have preserved ejection fraction. Most patients who develop heart failure, however, have an underlying condition first, like coronary artery disease or high blood pressure. But we're all at risk, especially as we get older, so we try to teach our patients to, to keep heart healthy habits and stick with those. Lots of risk factors for heart failure, and you can find more information on keepitpumping.com. So if you're diagnosed with heart failure, what kinds of treatments are available for either of the two major types? Regardless of the type of heart failure, it is a chronic condition. It can progress over time, leading to heart failure, hospitalization, and even death. Mm. Unfortunately, for heart failure with preserved ejection fraction, there are not any approved treatments, although certain potential treatments are being studied now. For patients like Eddie, with reduced ejection fraction, there are established therapies that are approved, the leading cardiology societies have a list of guidelines that list out heart failure specific medications. Eddie, how you doing now? I'm doing good. I, you know, since being diagnosed, um, I am on a medication regimen. I am happy to say I haven't been hospitalized since for heart failure. Oh, high five that, yeah. that's a big deal. I know, right? And I take care of heart failure patients, that's the real sign of success. Yeah, in addition to the medications, I also manage my condition with a low sodium diet. I work a full-time job and I'm able to just do everyday physical activities in moderation, mm -hmm. like swimming and hiking and gardening. Good for you, very yeah. proud of you. Thank you. you. What are the telltale signs, Beth, that, that things aren't working, that the heart failure is getting worse? Heart failure hospitalizations are a hallmark of disease progression or a sign that your condition is worsening. So if you've had a hospitalization, if you have worsening of your signs and symptoms, or if you're unable to do activities of daily living, sort of like Eddie reported walking on the treadmill, that would be a, a, a trigger to see your healthcare team. They might need to reevaluate or develop a different treatment regimen. You know, the great thing about medicine and how it's advanced is if you get care in time, it makes a big difference. But what we fear most is what we don't understand. So thanks for coming today and Eddie, Thank sharing you. everything.
Thanks for your wisdom. Thanks for being a nurse and nurse practitioner, all the other things that you do. For more information on heart failure, visit DrOz.com. Be right back. This segment was brought to you by Novartis. If you want to challenge me, I will come, I'll come hung over, eat a big steak. You could do your little 20 uh, push-ups with one leg or assisted pull-up. I'm telling you, you'll need a defibrillator when I'm done with you. But I'll see you soon, Dr. Oz. Get ready. All right, now, well, I heard about the little Mark Wahlberg challenge. I know Mark. What's up, Mark? He's my boy, but <laughs> oh, I have a secret weapon <gasps> for you. I do. I have a, we're going to get you ready. So, everybody, please welcome my personal trainer and my co author on the cut, Obi Obadike. Oh, my goodness. He's cutting the gill. He's cut. Obi. There we have What's it. What's up, man? What's going on? Dr. Thank Oz. goodness, what's, thank goodness. What's going on? I just want to look like this. Mark been <laughs> calling. He's trying to set a date. I need to look like this to go in there. I want to share this with your audience and viewers. There was a study that was done in the New England Journal of Medicine on intermittent fasting, okay? And it shows the effects of improved weight loss, improved, improved blood pressure and cholesterol levels, improved brain memory health, and improved longevity. Team Oz, right, 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 right there, Obi. Right right Team Oz, right right Team Oz, let's go. I like right it. Right Come on. Right, so Obi, you have, you have something to get him. We gotta I got, get him ready. I, well, I know he's a basketball fan, okay. right? And you love basketball. I so we're gonna do basketball jump shots. Okay. You're gonna squat down, and then you're just gonna jump. Squat right down, down, and you're just gonna jump. You do that for 25 to 30 seconds, just like that. There you go. It's a great. It's gonna work your glutes. Are they going in? Hamstrings, and it's gonna work the core. And it's also a great cardiovascular movement. Okay? There we go. I like hey, the squat. I you got, you got a lot yeah. of shots there. Look at that. Look at that. Yeah, like, I got a question for you. Right, right, go. While I'm doing this intermittent fast, he says he's going to be, you know, be drinking beer and burgers before the workout. But if I haven't eaten, like I often, I don't know how you guys are, but I don't like to eat before I work out because it starts to come up on me. So if I've been fasting, how do I know I'm doing the right thing? Well, you got to make sure if you're fasting and you're doing a workout, I would advise doing non-strenuous workouts because you don't have anything in your system. You don't have enough energy to execute the workout. So that's a non-strenuous workout. But I'm going to be honest with you. If you are going to work out and you're going to compete with Mark Wahlberg, I would advise you to eat something at least an hour before. <laughs> I would not advise you to be working out against him on an empty stomach. Well, here's how I figure. I'm this gonna man can, you know, he's in shape. He's in shape. I'm going to tempt <laughs> so fate. Dr. Oz is in shape, He's right? in shape, too. <laughs> in shape. We see him do the push-ups. Yeah. Here's my thought. Well, our ancestors would get up, and there was no food in front of them. They'd go stalk their prey. So we're, we we got to have a little endurance. Absolutely. And so I'm going to go after it. I'm going to push the limits. We're going to find out what happens. But we'll, we'll all be, it'll be a shot heard around the world I when it happens. I can't there wait to is. see that challenge, right. man. It's going to well, be congratulations. Great. Absolutely. You got this my guy yeah, looking yeah, at the guy. He's most definitely. This is my guy. Morris, thank you so much. It's been a great honor thank having you here. Come back whenever you're free. I'm going to call you on that. I'm going to call you on that. Really, the power of change lies in the power of you. Just one person with one voice speaking the truth. It matters. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs> when did the book come out?